Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis, welcome to episode 24, and this week we're gonna take another look at a video that I posted quite some while ago now, which shows a great technique for making selections of fine hair using the multiplied blend mode and a levels adjustment. Hey folks, Glyn here and I've got another Photoshop tutorial for you now and this one is all about making selections. I seem to have a bit of a, a mission in life to, to try and find as many ways of making the best selections as I can and this is just another one that you can add to your toolbox. Now, I've done a video uh, a while back now that's on my YouTube page and that's this one down here and it's called Photoshop Cutouts Taming Refine Edge. And that's basically a short tutorial where I'll show you how I do my initial cutouts. And, and just quickly, what I basically do is when I'm doing a cutout of somebody on a background to put them into another scene, generally what I'll do is I'll cut out the body first, then I'll do the hair, and that's when I use the refine edge built into Photoshop, and then I'll combine the two. And the reason I do that is because I found that when I tried to do both together, the head and the body, when I started then to use Refine Edge, it would affect the selection on the body. So this is just a way that I've actually come up with that helps me to now get a good selection for both parts. And you can see that on that video. Now also in that video, I'll show you how you can use a layer style to pick up all the extra fine hairs that you can't seem to, or I couldn't seem to get into, to pick up with in Refine Edge. And what I wanna do in this short video is to show you yet another way Another technique that you can add to your Photoshop toolbox for helping you, helping you to pick up all these little extra fine hairs. So, so here's, we're gonna use this picture which is the same one as I did in that, that other video. And it's our, our model here, a guy called Sean Stafford. And what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna to go to Select and Load Selection. And this is something I always do when I make selections. I generally save them out just in case I lose them at a later date or I knock the keyboard and lose all that work I've done. I'll save them as a selection. So now I'm gonna just load the one where I've combined both the head and the body together. Now what I'll do is I'll just add a, a layer mask. And again, this, is all, this part here is all explained in that earlier video. What I'll do now is just drag this into this scene here. Now, also on that video that I've just mentioned, I've covered a little extra few little tips where you can very, very quickly get rid of this kind of outline sometimes that you get when you do your cutout. So it's definitely worth checking that video out. But here's another way for getting all those extra fine hairs. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, Refine Edge has done a pretty good job of cutting out Sean's flyaway hair here but there are, there's a lot of hairs that it hasn't picked up on. So here's how we can use a technique using blend modes and levels to get a few more hairs visible because all we're looking to do is make it look as realistic as we can. So what we're gonna do then, where we've got our layer that contains Sean, we've got this layer mask and I'm gonna first of all hold down my shift key and click on the layer mask to turn it off the background here. So now we can see the original background that Sean was shot against in the studio. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna get something like my lasso tool, and I'm gonna make a selection, a very rough one, around the outside of Sean's head. So I'm getting a little bit of that background in, and I'm just going wide enough to sew where I'm including some of those stray hairs that maybe Refine Edge couldn't quite pick up. And then I'm gonna come back around the top part of his head, just almost to the outside of it, and just there. So we're only including really the top part of his head and just a little bit of that background area as well. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna put that onto its own layer by going layer, new, and layer via copy. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command or control J. Then we'll turn back on the layer mask by holding the shift key and clicking on the layer mask itself. But now you can see what I've actually done here so far is this is the area that I cut it out, cut, cut it out, cut out. So it's a little bit of the background and the outer part of Sean's hair there. So two things I need to do. First thing, I'm gonna bring up my levels and I'm just gonna get the white sampler point here and the area containing the background, the original background that Sean was shot against, I'm gonna put a little click in there to tell Photoshop to turn that to pure white. That's all I'm gonna do at this point and just click okay. Then on this layer, I'm gonna change the blend mode to something like multiply. 
Now, you'll see that it does have a bit of a, a negative effect here. We've got all this darkening, but just for now, let's just look at, the, look at the side of his hair here, where we're seeing all these fine hairs now starting to show up. So all we need to do now then, just to sort of finesse this, if you like, is we can add a, a layer mask, get a brush, make sure we're painting in black, and we'll make it, you know, not completely soft, maybe 30-ish percent on the old hardness there. Nice and small, and then I'm going to paint away at 100% opacity in the top left here, we can see that, the dark area of his head. And on his clothing here, get rid of all this area, because all we're interested in is those extra flyaway hairs on the outside. Because, you know, Refine Edge did a really good job of picking up all this hair originally anyway, it's just the extra bits. Now there's a little bit of darkening on the sky as well, so we'll just get rid of that, making sure not to paint over any of those little fine hairs we've now picked up. Something like that is looking pretty good. Now I'm hoping this will show up on your screen, but if I just zoom in onto the right hand side here and turn this layer on and off, you can see how all these extra hairs here that weren't really showing up are now starting to show up just because we've added that multiply blend mode there. Now there's a little bit going down the outside of his head here, so maybe I can paint on that layer mask just to remove that darkness there but I'm only gonna be leaving those fine flyaway hairs on the outside. And because it's obviously on its own layer here, we can actually adjust the opacity just to taste, just so we can get it exactly how we want it. This hasn't gotta be perfect. There's a, there's a saying that Joel Grimes used, and that is just do it well enough to sell the fake. That is all we're looking to do. And by picking up all these extra little hairs like we're doing here now, just helps to add to the realism and to make the selection here as good as we possibly can make it. So that's just another technique. It's not gonna be the be all and end all. It's not gonna be the answer to all the selection problems that you have, but it's just another one to add to your toolbox for when the moment comes, you know that you can use this one to do a specific task. So hope that was helpful. Definitely check out the other video, the one where we said taming, uh, taming refine edge. Uh, any questions, by all means, send me an email to glynn at glynnjewish.com. Otherwise, I shall see you next time. Okay, so thanks for checking out the video. Hope you like the content there. It's just another technique that you can add into your Photoshop toolbox of techniques, if you like, because when it comes to retouching, there's very rarely a one-click fix that works on every picture. It's always good to build up a knowledge base of a few different techniques that kind of do the same thing, but maybe in a slightly different way and produce slightly different results depending on what picture it is that you're working on and what challenges you come across, especially when you're doing selections. But listen, make sure that you click on the subscribe button if you haven't already, so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And I would really appreciate the support if you could share this video and my YouTube channel with anybody that you know who you think might like to see the content that I post out each and every week. But for now, until next time, I'll see you soon.